<laughs> Boxingboys.com here. We got Richardson Hitchens, Malik Hawkins, what's up, what's up? Coach Kenny Coach Ellis. Kenny, what's up? Now we a couple days away for a homecoming fight. Obviously, homecoming for you guys. Richardson, not from here, but still uh, a brother of tanks. You was in camp with him the entire time. Uh, just break down the work that you guys got in the gymnast camp because I mean I saw like small footages, clips here and there, but I'm sure that doesn't do it justice. All the all the sweat, the tears, the blood that go in that. Talk to us about camp and what that was like to be in camp with Tank. Man, it was crazy. I, we had probably like a military camp for real. I'm not even gonna lie, our camp was crazy. You know, training twice a day, uh, all the spawn that we did. Um, it, it was crazy, but you know, it was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears going on, going into this camp and coming from out of this camp. You know. We ready. It's funny you say military. I saw uh, some clips of like it was like circuit training, and somebody get done on one station and Go move to on the to the next. It was, it was very. I mean, I, I'm in the military, so it was very military based. It's funny you say that. Um, I'm obviously not the first time you've been in camp with Saint, but what was the meaning behind knowing that you're gonna fight on the homecoming undercard? Was it? Uh, it had to been an extra little motivation. Yeah, it's, it's historical. It was. It was a, uh, a beautiful meaning to me. You know. Uh, me being on this undercard, you know, we came up together in the amateurs, you know, went to the same school and everything. So just for me to be on this undercard back here in, in our home hometown is wonderful. Richardson, what was that work like, man? I mean, you, you didn't got work everywhere, obviously, New York, Vegas. What was the work like at Upton, like getting, getting that work in and take care? One thing that stood out was the, the heat. The heat in the gym, it was grueling. So every, every workout, it kind of made it 10 times harder. But just being around the atmosphere, being with Malik, Green, Kenny, Lil Malik, right. Tank, everybody, Coach Kenny, they just always push us. And right. what I love about the gym is that my coach sent me over to them, but the coaches treated me like like I was one of their own. They, they, uh, they wasn't over there watching Malik hit the bag, and, I, and I'm over there just doing my own thing. Eyes was on me just like how it was on their own fighters. So I appreciate that. And just the sparring, sparring was great. I got like a, a whole bunch of looks. I got a tall guy. I got a young, hungry fighter. We had Kareem, he could press you, he could box you, Tank, smart and technical. So my game is just gonna be is just gonna be elevated for this fight. Right now, you talk about the heat. I hear that it get up to usually 90, 91 degrees in the gym, plus the, the heat outside with the humidity and yeah. stuff. Mentally, how was you able to overcome that, right? Because I'm sure it was times, you know, shortness of breath, you you exhausted, but obviously y'all keep going, y'all you gotta keep going. How was you able to overcome Mentally, that? Mentally, you just gotta keep going. The coaches is screaming at you. And you see, you see the other fighters pushing through it, so you don't want to look like a chump and, and give right. up. So you got to just keep going. But every day mentally, I come in the gym, and I, I just it's just like, damn, I got to go work out in this heat. But it is what it is. It's just like, I mean, if we could do it in there, I know Saturday night that arena is going to be a breeze for us. Talk, one thing I saw also, uh, late night runs. It seemed like that, that that was a big thing in camp. Obviously, I saw yourself, Tim. You, the late night runs, what's that like to – you know, a lot of competitiveness between between y'all, yeah. like seeing who can finish the run first, or typically what what are those runs like? Because I mean, y'all putting in five six miles each run, right? Yeah, the first, I remember the first. I remember the first night me and Tank was running, and, and I start going, and then I'm I, I remember the face. I run fast, so I remember the face was fat, and like my body felt different, like from right. regular. I'm in a mile. I'm like in a mile in, and I'm like, yo, is this how is this how motherfuckers run out here? And then we start slowing down, and then I, once the run was over, we was like, yo, like, yo, we got to slow down with each other because we too competitive because we were trying to push each other, but, like, we burning ourselves out just trying to keep up with each other. Right, right, Trying right. to keep up with each other, but it pushed, pushed us to, to our limit, so it was great for us. The runs, everything was great. The sparring, that's, the sparring was really, was, was big for me. That's one thing that really helped me out with this camp. Malik. Hey, he just summed it up. <laughs> <laughs> everything, he summed everything up. You know, the runs. And everything, you know, sometimes running at night, we wouldn't really run that hard because, you know, we still in Baltimore City. It's still crazy. But, but why, why, why we don't, the one, one thing that stood out for me for the runs, though, we'll run from, like, I think east to west, right? Yeah. But running through the city, like, I I, I grew up with Tank, but, like, I never been in Baltimore. I did camp in Baltimore, but it was, like, from, from Virginia to Baltimore and then go back right. or Tank will come out there. But running through the city and just seeing where Tank come from, it just like motivated me. It really like made me feel made me feel happy for him. As like a, it made me feel happy happy for him even more. Cause it's like like I I'm from the hood. I'm from the slums. Right, but right, from right. Baltimore, it's like you seeing zombies and just to overcome <laughs> just to overcome right. that. 
it's like wonderful. One thing I wanted to bring, one thing I wanted to bring up, I was out to eat with Erickson Lubin last weekend, and we was talking about like the up and coming prospects. Yeah. And he swore to God, he like, yo, ain't nobody, ain't nobody fucking with Africa, ain't nobody fucking. And he Facetimes you right there on the spot, yeah. like, yo, tell him you. And it, it's just funny because I speak to a lot of these other fighters, and they speak so highly on you. You talked about sparring with Tank. I know you sparred with a lot of other big names. Yeah. You sparred with AB. You sparred with Devin Haney. Do you feel like stepping in the ring with Tank, granted sparring is sparring, but do you feel like that was the best sparring you didn't got so far? Uh, I, it's every spar, everybody's great in their own way. Like Devin Haney pushed me, T Terrence Crawford pushed me. I've been, I, I had that like growing up, growing up around like Shakur. He always had that mindset to spar every and anybody in a right. top competition. Like Coach K would always put us versus guys that was like on a whole different level from us. So, like, it's, it's something that's installed in me to spar the best that's out there. So it's not like it ain't nothing that I've never seen, but it was definitely something that keep me sharp and keep me keep my game elevated. Like, it, it's, it, you ain't gonna walk in, the in any boxing gym and see a Tank Davis. So it was definitely good. But you fighting at 140, Every fighter you just named is bigger than Tank. So how did how would you say you know? Granted, it's bigger gloves, but how would you say his power matches up to the likes of you know what you remember from sparring the Terence Crawford and the Devin Haney and, and names like that? I, uh, yeah, the Tank is definitely one of the hardest punches I, I sparred. I spar a lot of big punches. The Terence Crawford could spar. Ivan Barrenchik could, could hit. Tom um, Terence could hit. Uh, tank definitely could hit. Like. I'm the first time he's sparring Tank. He, it's a, it, what makes Tank different ain't about how he hit. It's how accurate he is. He know how to place his shots and he know how to pick. He know how to throw the right shots at the right time. So that's what kind of it's kind of tricky. He kind of make you gun shot because you don't want to just make a mistake and get paid and pay for it. What have you guys noticed about Tank since you know him since he was he was smaller? What have, like in terms of evolution? What have you seen in his style from back in the amateur days to more modern times? Him being a two-time champ. Me me sparring him for when he was getting ready for the first world title fight. And when I first bought him, he was kind of more aggressive. So it, he he's trying to make, he'll try to fight you more. So it'll, it'll give you opportunity to pick off pick off certain shots on him. But now as he got older, he's more wise and he's more patient and he's more setting up different things. So I kind of see him grow from that. Malik, I mean you probably I mean not probably you didn't got more rounds with him than than Richardson. I mean just being in there with him since he was a kid, right? Yeah. Since he was a kid. How can you know? Well, actually, this to you and Coach Kenny. How, how would y'all say that he's developed throughout the years? I mean, I know that's very uh, broad, you know, very broad question. But how would you say he's developed mentally? He, he, he's learning how to work round for round without getting his um, spawn partners out of there. At one time, he would he wouldn't put the rounds and he would just get you straight out of there. But now, he's learning how to um, get more rounds in. Would you say? I mean, would you say that's a good thing, though? Because I mean, if he's able, if he's able to get you out of there, shouldn't shouldn't he do that? Not if not, in, he's... not in the spawn session. Okay. Some, you know, get the rounds and learn and teach each other. Yeah, because you know, sometimes you, you know, uh, you want to be able to get the rounds. So if you got a 12 round fight, you want to be able to go 12 rounds. You need to know that your fighter can do 12 rounds strong. If he keeps spawn, if he spawn and he keep stopping his dude in the second round, we don't know what's gonna happen right. in the sixth round. We don't know what's gonna happen in the fifth round. Right. We don't know what's gonna happen in the eighth round. Right. So right. It, sometimes it's best for him not to not not to stop it, stop the dude. <laughs> uh, Malik and Coach Kenny, just let, let us know what it means to you as a fighter and you as a coach to have you know I mean you on the undercard. And you have several fighters on the undercard, you know, given these fighters' backgrounds, given the situation that the city is currently in, right? You know, uh, for Tank to bring such an event and for your gym to have so many fighters on the undercard, what's that mean? The whole event brings bring revenue to the city and it, and it shows the city that um, we can come together as one and, and, and show unity and, and, and give the kids that's coming behind them hope. They, they see that it can be done now and that motivates them to stay in the gym. Right, it mean a lot. It mean a lot to me as a fighter, you know, being on this card, being on the historic card back here in Baltimore. Cause, you know, coming from coming up from where I came from, we we really didn't have nobody. Right. We really didn't have nobody. You know, that to look up to and the dude that we did look up to, they was only in, they was in the gym for a minute, then went to the street. Or now they either did or in jail. Right. So for him to 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 show the growth and the you know, the consistency to, to stay in the gym, you know, and become a world champion and bring something back here to Baltimore is historic. One thing and I'm I, grateful. One thing I really find uh, just just eye-catching, you always do, you post videos on your Facebook page of the, the little ones outside the gym. They, they, they ain't even in the gym. They outside the gym on the sidewalk just throwing down. 
one of them right here. My protege right here. This is your protege? I seen him working on Waiting for the arrival of the one king. One time, yes, and tell me right here. Talk what's your song. name? What, what's your name, Lamar? Samari Everett. What How old are you? I'm 12 years old. I fight 70 pounds. 70 pounds. So he's one of the fighters that I've seen on the sidewalk. Right, on the sidewalk in front of the gym, get just spar, just, just with no headgear. What that does, if you can spar with no headgear, and you put a headgear on in an actual fight, it's gonna no be fit. nothing. It's no fit. He's going to get whatever, whatever the award is. We're going and to get it. I've seen the, the boys just like the girls as well. You know, outside you spar, the girl, the girls get down too. Can you talk to us real quick about uh, Mia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, Entitled, Betting Shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.